Hello to everyone, I'm Giorgio Vassena, I'm a professor of uh, geomatics at the University of Brescia, North Italy. And I'm going to present uh, this paper, the Indoor Mobile Mapping System and Crowd Simulation to Support School Reopening because of COVID-19, a case study. I'm a part of uh, a number of uh, experts and researchers on different uh, topics. Mainly I'm, uh, as I said, uh, involved uh, in this paper because I'm involved in the part of uh, 3D mapping and uh, scan to beam and point cloud managing. So I am part of this, uh, uh, so I, I I will not be able to present uh, in, at the best uh, the other parts, but uh, I do the best for for make possible you understanding what we have done in this case study. The pandemic emerg emergency due to SARS-CoV-2 has made occupancy analysis a crucial topic of international research on building performance. The need to develop simulation to support the functional analysis of building spaces in relation to social distancing rules is an example. This became even more fundamental considering the need to assess the sustainability of spaces in high occupancy buildings as the educational ones, for which occupancy evaluations results uh, very important and crucial to ensure the safety of the end user in their daily activities. Uh, this paper is uh, organized in a fast introduction, in the motivation of the research and uh, uh, going in the details of uh, research methodologies uh, applied and uh, we are going to present uh, with nice results and some conclusions. In, uh, we can say that in architectural, engineering, uh, construction and operation field, crowd simulation have progressively emerged as an approach to design, predict, and assess occupancy of indoor spaces use, in particular for building typologies that implicate extensive navigation and uh, pedestrian movement. At the same time, a few crowd simulation applications have focused on uh, educational facilities. And in some times we have also some uh, application that have been developing some games to help uh, the students to apply this uh, uh, regulation in uh, daily use of uh, the spaces of the school. Uh, previous, there are not a lot of previous works to, on this kind of uh, epidemics and related risk assessment. The more, more um, uh, simulation, uh, crowd simulation are applied in uh, environmental analytics. Uh, in particular, we have some indoor agent based simulation rich with thermal perception, comfort and responsive behaviors. So I think the, this application on educational uh, uh, buildings is, is something particular that we enjoyed a lot to carry on and in particular we have been uh, starting using uh, making this uh, research on May 2020 after that Italy was open after the long uh, and tragic lockdown and we, we have been working to make possible a secure and safe reopening of uh, this school on September 2010 and what has happened. So what we, we have done, the results of the of result was really applied by the director of the school for uh, to manage the reopening of the school we are speaking of. Uh, where we are? We are, in we are located in Milan, North Italy. This is an old building. Um, so it's, and uh, as you see in the facade, so it's, it's not so easy to organize of the uh, movements and reorganize the movements in the school because the school of course is organized in a very classical way so a big entrance a big hole inside and the room are uh, let's say organized in uh, in classroom but of course 
the native uh, application was not uh, school. Mm -hmm. And we are ki we have kids from um, from two three years, so it's very easy. In, it's not so easy to explain to these kids how to move, <laughs> of course. And we reach uh, let's say young guys of ten years, and uh, of course it's not easy to manage uh, people of eight nine ten years because they are excited. Where they are of course uh, they want to run to play, so it's it's not easy to to. To, to provide them the, uh, the, the freedom to, to enjoy the school, but in the same time to do it in, in uh, following the safety regulation. Mm -hmm. These are the main uh, uh, topics we have been uh, facing. Uh, we have been facing in this study. First of all, we make a data collection of uh, plant view, uh, drawings, uh, all the stuff that was uh, present in the school, and uh, later we we made uh, a 3D mapping uh, of all the school and joining all this information, we were able to create a big model that was the real important base of, uh, of the study. And also we could share with, between all the people involved in the, in the research. And some people was not in Milan, so we couldn't visit the site. And we organized how to share this information, the, the geometrical information between the team. And the first application was to analyze the, how many people will stay, could stay in the room following the regulation of the Italian state, and of course how to organize the path, and how to organize the desks inside the room, so desk and movements. And all this was uh, uh, checked, let's say, and analyzed with a crowd simulation in the different timing of the use of the school, different use of different spaces, and we can show some nice, uh, interesting training videos. And all this, was, we, we would try to transfer the, um, the, the results that was uh, later in, uh, applied by the director using particu a particular study of sign, how to communicate to small children uh, the regulation we have to follow. Okay, so you need a sign with colors. Everything must look like a game, like a, like a, something that children can enjoy doing that. Mm -hmm. And finally, it's a very important topic. We we be use all this information, okay, the geometrical information, just to also uh, making a very rigorous, uh, innovative approach on uh, the ventilation, how to manage the ventilation in this old building. And uh, because uh, it's well known that the good ventilation uh, helps to contain the, the, the pandemic or the transmission of pandemic between people. So uh, the regulation of, of Italian state are, all, I think, something very, uh, very obvious, let's say. But we have also some uh, some par some regulation that let's say has some conflicts. So, for example, we will see that for example the definition how how to manage the relative position between students in the in the schools was not really clear. So in some sometimes these regulations say uh, they define the di minimum distancing. Sometimes they they define the areas that the, every student has to cover. So it's not easy to to define good, good, uh, let's say, uh, a good organization of the spaces if uh, the, uh, at the beginning, for maybe also for the emergency, the regulation was not so clear. Mm -hmm. So we started, first of all, with uh, a very innovative approach. This is uh, the first time we've been using this device uh, in the field, uh, because you see, in fact, that the device I was using, this is myself, it was still, uh, let's say, a a demo unit. This system was has been developed by the spin-off company of our university in Brescia, and this system is uh, is based on uh, on SLAM technology. That means that the system can acquire also indoor environments without using GPS, because you can use so you can move inside the environments and uh, creating 3D maps. And you see here the system is based on two LiDAR sensors 
every sensor has uh, um, uh, 16 rotate, rotating beams uh, with a range of about uh, one, 100 meters and an accuracy of 2 centimeters. Inside here on the measuring head there is a, a IMU, an inertial system, and here is a, a full panoramic camera that can acquire 5K images uh, on demand and uh, full images, full resolution images uh, every 2-3 seconds with uh, a frequency like this. So first of all, let's say we don't go too much in the details of the system and we see here what is the result you can get from the system. And the result is very easy. So you have a point clouds, and on the point cloud you can project your spherical images. So you can move in the spherical Im images, looking around, take measurements, and in particular, what's very interesting, you can share this information uh, everywhere in the web. So without being here, all the researchers involved in the project could have uh, the possibility to visit and to see how is in reality the the. The, how it was in reality the school and to, so it was very helpful for the decision making to share information. This is, uh, uh, let's say, an important way to share data, but the second is a more technical one. The point clouds that uh, has been generated on the three floors of the buildings, uh, I just remember that this uh, mapping, for example, for the fourth floor of the building uh, was acquired in, in less than 15 minutes, just walking time and the results was produced in, uh, after, let's say, about uh, 45, one hour time. So you have a resolution map, uh, and this is a, a tool that uh, presents a projection, a orthophoto of uh, the point clouds, it's called X-ray or um, blueprint image, and you can, we can see how it appears. This is something that you can easily change with uh, people. And you see here, you have the map, you have the room, you, have, uh, you can see everything in the room. So you can also in later check the tables. You can check also with how the, the space is organized. And you can take measurements. You can, uh, you can make depth measurements on this. And uh, you, later you can export this information to Auto, AutoCAD and this scaled image is, could, can be moved in AutoCAD where you can redraw it and you obtain a very, a very nice Divu G AutoCAD based drawing. So a map of, this, of a drawing. And from these, and from the point clouds, you can update with different approaches using uh, Revit, uh, Autodesk, or uh, ClearEdge uh, uh, softwares. So standard software, you can create your beam model. For example, this is the Revit-based beam model. And um, from this uh, is the base to produce deliverables, like the analysis of the capacity of every room and uh, the desk arrangement in the different rooms. Due to the fact that, uh, as I told you at the beginning, you have free, for example, these free official regulations that are all active. It was not an easy job to define which of these regulations, how to integrate and to mix this regulation in the same time. But there is an example for, that for every room, the analysis of two rooms, A and B, with different areas, uh, applying one over three the regulation, you have very, a very very deep difference in the number of uh, teachers and students that can stay in one room. Uh, the, the plan, of course, was very, very useful to organize the use of the spaces and to integrate the existing room with new ones. And this, uh, for example, the uh, information platform one, and this is one of the uh, information platform where uh, the, the data have been organized with a different use of uh, different areas of, uh, of the school. And this is, for example, an evaluation with uh, different uh, algorithms and approaches of every room, how many uh, students and teacher can, uh, can uh, uh, let's say, can support, can, uh, okay, can, how many students can go in the, in the room. And very, very interesting was this approach. So all this data, the 3D data, the plan view can be, be using to create uh, a crowd simulation so with the crowd simulation software, the, uh, the 
movements of the people. How so? We 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 try to understand the end users' flows. So you see here is the entrance. You see in the red here is some place where you have a, a, a possible crowded area, and we launch this for different uh, situation like the entrance, the ex -ent entrance, the exit of, of the student from the rooms, and uh, the lunch time because it's very critical the time where the people go to the canteen, and uh, this is for example how the main hall was organized in different. Uh, uh, blocks in the way to try to avoid any kind of interaction between path between people and students staying in different classrooms and so we try to organize the free time in the big room trying to take the people of a different rooms separated and this is a nice example of uh, the exit time how the model try to uh, to, to analyze uh, the, the time the students are, uh, are starting going out from the room, from the, the, their classroom. Okay, for example, you, will go, you see here all the people inside, and you see here, uh, I cannot say this is done to, 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 to create the path, but it's very, very useful to, uh, to understand if there are some critical area or, and how to organize. So, and uh, it's been very useful to, to understand better how to organize this uh, flow of students and people, for example, at the time of the exit from the structure, because you have people coming from the second level, it mix going south here, you have to avoid that they mix with people of the uh, zero level, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, these is uh, the results of the analysis of uh, the um, the access to the canteen area, where this is the canteen area, and in particular, it's very, it was very hard to understand how to organize, because the canteen space can um, manage only 59 people in this situation. And I think it's very, this is, you can see how it can be very useful also for teaching and organizing the, the movements of the people, okay, inside the canteen. And uh, for example, you, you see here some there are some can be some problem a new classroom will go coming inside, and you will see the teacher going there and eh, okay so and uh, you say what how has been used this system just to support the director to the decision making process, and here we have some examples of. Uh, of uh, how the science has been organized in the way that, you know, a, a kid of uh, four or five years uh, can easily understand that he has to follow, for example, the green uh, fits because it, it becomes like a like a game, okay? But And uh, so it also organizes the movements with this way and uh, uh, it seems they're, they're having very good success. And you see all the panels organized in school have been uh, uh, there is a project with all the panels, all the different layers of different panels, and all the panels, as you see here, are organized the way that also a kid can understand and try to enjoy to see this panel to follow the regulation. And uh, let's say last but not least <laughs> is the ventilation analysis. Okay, the, the, because having the 3D of all the structure have the dimension of the of the doors and and windows, we could uh, uh, have a, we could run a very very deep and uh, interesting analysis of all the uh, uh, dimension of all the windows and about all the ventilation of every 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 area of the school. So every and this uh, uh, it was done a very advanced run a very advanced algorithm to analyze that is explained in the paper. Um, and in this way, you, you, it could be possible to analyze not only the, the how to organize the people in the room due to the numbers of people and distances, but also to the ventilation, because this is an old structure. And uh, the good is the old structure have a very high ceiling, but uh, okay, we wanted to be sure that uh, the, the students could uh, access to the area in a very safe way. So we are approaching to the end. What we can say, uh, we can say that of course the crowd simulation has been very, very useful for what? For to check, to check if some critical uh, path and uh, uh, trajectories of people are present, but mainly is a decision making 
support for the director that of course has uh, he's a uh, real manager the real master chef of this uh, reopening so uh, and these all the tools that we have developing has been very useful for the decision making process of the director of the school the limits the limits are that it's really not easy to transfer this regulation to students in, in particular students that are very active like people from 16 uh, years old and I think it's really, we don't face the ped pedagogical aspect and teaching methods that, of course, are very important to transfer these regulations, the results of this research to the kids. And uh, future? Future is uh, we want to go on uh, making and developing a serious game to try to educate in a very light and easy way the students. Uh, and... Um, and I think uh, we want to go on analyzing what's how this path and crowding analysis and be applied and have, have been having good results uh, or bad results in the school organization. I thank you for uh, attending this uh, and following me in this presentation. And I hope to come back uh, very soon in the future with uh, new results on this topic. Thank you so much.